Father God, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity to gather. Father, we thank you that, um, that Barb's here with us tonight. Thanks for bringing her, Father. We, are, we appreciate you. We love you and we thank you. We know that you, uh, you are in control of all things, Father. So we just, uh, we just learn to live um, content because we know that you have, you're in charge of everything, Father. We know that. And uh, it's hard sometimes for us. You know how we can be knuckleheads and try to run off in different directions, Father. But we're, we thank you that you're patient and loving and kind and, and understanding, Father. So we just thank you that, um, that you're with us day in and day out. And you know everything about us. And, uh, and you direct us. And we thank you for that, Father. Sometimes we want to run off on our own. But we know that you're always there. Always there encouraging us to to um, stay steadfast to your word, Father. So we thank you that uh, that you've given us your word to continue to read and continue to take in and continue to change, Father. We thank you that you're changing us little by little. I know it's a process, and we know it's a process, so it's just a matter of being patient. And uh, We're trying, Father, we're trying, and we know that you comprehend that we're trying, and we're just, we're just so glad that you don't stop loving us. In spite of our uh, craziness sometimes, Father. But we just thank you and we praise you in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So we are in Second Timothy chapter 4. We're finishing it. Finishing Second Timothy, okay? Um, now, man, the, the first first three chapters were really, really, really good. Uh, these, these are letters now. We have to comprehend that these were letters that were written to Timothy because Timothy was going to eventually inherit the church. Okay? Um, he was going to be in charge of running church. So basically, Paul is, you know, sharing some information to Timothy. Um, you know, what he should do, what he should continue in. So, and that's what these letters are about. So, we're going to start in chapter 4. Okay? Chapter 4, verse 1. My brother, but it's now. <laughs> Isn't that the way it is? <laughs> Isn't that the way Satan works? <laughs> That's the way Satan works. He tries to distract you whenever, uh, whenever he, whenever uh, he knows that you're getting into the Word of God. He, he's, he's there to distract you in every every way possible. Huh? They're in there. Both of them. They're in the bedroom. Go, go. <laughs> okay. So let's start on uh, chapter four, verse chapter four, verse one. Okay. And it says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick or the living. That's us, because we're alive now. We're alive. We're alive in Christ, and we're alive in God, and we're alive spiritually, and we're connected to God now. So he says, verse 1 again, I charge you, therefore, and I was talking to Timothy, but he's also talking to us. So we have to, we have to take, these, take these, uh, these letters and, and remember that since we are a part of the true Christian church, these letters pertain to us as well. So, And we have to also comprehend that Timothy was taken over the church. Once you're saved, you're a minister. You're a minister. You're called to go out and minister this word. So you have to know it. So it's important for us to continue reading it, continue taking it in, so we know what our mission is, so we know what to share with the true Christian church. Okay? So it says again, I charge you, therefore, before God... And the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, that's us, and the dead, and his appearing and his kingdom, okay? He says, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Now, that's what, that's why, that's why we need to know this word, okay? Because there's going to be a time, you know, God always opens up opportunity for us to share this message. Always, always. Yesterday, my mom and Roseanne came over. We hadn't seen Roseanne in a while. They came over. Roseanne brought us some cookies. You know, and, and, and we sat and we started talking about the Word of God. And I, I shared, you know, sharing the things that God has revealed to me with my mom and Roseanne. You know what I'm saying? So we always have to be ready in season and out of season because you never know. You never know when God's going to need, going to use you. All right. Now we're called to be used every day. Now this, this whole pandemic thing has kept us kind of locked down. So it makes it hard for us to get out and even share this message. You know what I'm saying? Because Satan is trying to separate us from the community. Separate, he's trying to separate the community because if he separates us, what does Satan do? Satan divides and conquers. That's his job. His, his job is to divide us and then his job is to conquer us. He doesn't want us to be saved. He doesn't want us to be good with God. So we need to always be ready. So he says here again, verse two, preach the word. 
Be instant in season, out of season. Okay, it says reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All right, so that's what basically Paul's telling us to do that as well as he's telling Timothy. All right, now he says in verse three, for the time shall come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And uh, now you think about it. I mean, it's already it's been it's been two thousand years since this word has been shared since Paul shared this word. All right, and. And he's right because there's a lot of false doctrine out there. There's a lot of things we gotta, we gotta make sure that we, that we always, uh, test the spirits. The word of God, uh, teaches us, tells us, test the spirits, test the spirits. And how do we test the spirits? Through the word of God. All right. That's the only way you can test the spirits that are, that are coming at you. You have to know God's word. If you don't know God's word, then you don't know whether this person is lying to you or sharing the truth with you. Okay. So he says here again, verse three, for the time will come, when they will endure, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Okay, all right. In other words, they'll these 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 teachers are going to just share whatever they think, whatever they think is the truth, and people are just going to just eat it up. You know what I'm saying? I see it all the time. It, it it's hard for me after God has revealed the truth to me. It's hard for me to watch Christian TV because it's hard because what cleanses us, what changes our mind is the Word of God. Now, I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot of programs where they share one verse and then they talk for an hour. You know what I'm saying? That's one verse out of the, one verse. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that one verse can't, can't do something for you, but that's what you're only, you're only taking in one verse. And to me, that's not enough. Listen, you want to be cleansed and you want, you want to be able to fight this flesh. You got to know how to fight it. You got to have God's word up here, in here, which renews the mind. When the mind is renewed, then you can take this flesh in control. Then you can say, no, 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 I'm not going to think like this. I'm not going to be in fear. This, this past weekend, uh, this past, this past weekend, I heard a lot of people were fearful, fearful, uh, anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. People mention in anxiety. Anxiety is fear. That's what anxiety is. That's what Satan wants. Satan wants you to be afraid. All right. This whole pandemic. That's what Satan's doing. He's trying to f- put fear within us. Now we have to comprehend that, and and it's and it's and it's through Timothy's letter that we have a sound mind. We are given a sound mind. You know what I'm saying? We have no fear. All right. We're not. We shouldn't be afraid of anything. The pandemic. Listen. You're going to die. Eventually, this flesh is going to go back into the ground. All right. Now, our our glory, our hope is that we're going to get a new glorious body. All right. So we already know. So we don't worry about it. So, so you know, if I die tomorrow, so be it. That means God said, okay, your mission is over. I don't believe he doesn't. I don't believe he takes somebody until their mission is over. Once they've been, once they've received this message of truth and salvation, I don't believe that God will take you away until you finish, just like Paul. Now, now we're going to find out because Paul's going to share that with us here. Okay, so let's continue again. So he says here again, he says in, in uh, verse 3, for the, time, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, okay? And they shall turn away their ears. Now this is verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned in unto fables. Now, okay. <laughs> now, um, now I love my son. Don't get me wrong. I love my son dearly, but he's always saying that these are fables. These are their stories. They're made up. And then he shares what he believes. And, and I always ask him, well, you know, show me some literature so I can read what you're reading. But he never really has it. He said, Oh no, you have to go on YouTube and listen to this guy and listen to that guy. And I'm like, and I did. I tried. I, I, I tried to go on and listen to what he's listening to and I could not. I could not take the guy 20 minutes. He just, you know, now he was supposed to be explaining, uh, about the Bible, you know, how to comprehend the word of God. He was supposed to be explaining that. And, and, and as I was watching, it was, it was like a two hour teaching, all right, or, or a two hour sharing for the first 20 minutes. He didn't do nothing but babble. And I was like, and I'm sitting there and a dozen hours sitting there and he's, this guy's just babbling on and babbling on and babbling on. And I told us, I can't take it no more. 20 minutes, 20 minutes. And he still hasn't even shared anything about the word of God. And I kept saying, well, when's you going to share the word of God? That's all we're called to do, share God's word. Because it's his word that cleanses us. It's his word that renews our mind. So if we don't share God's word, then how are people going to change? 
How are people going to be able to change? They're not. So let's continue again. So it says here in verse 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Yes, because that's what's happening. And shall be turned unto fables. But watch you in all things. Now he's, he's telling us, but watch you in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make proof, make full proof of your ministry. See, we're called to, to get out there and, and this is, we have a ministry now. You're not just, you're not just, uh, you're not just somebody that comes to Bible study anymore. You are a minister now. You have been ordained to be a minister and share this word. Now, now it's time to, to get, to get, to get into learning it. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you don't read it, the Spirit, now, now Jesus tells us in, in, in the Gospels that the Spirit will remind us of all things pertaining to God's Word. If we don't read God's Word, the Spirit can't remind you of it. Okay, so you have to read it. Okay, so the more you read it, and, and like, even if you don't comprehend it, just read it, just take it in, because the Spirit will reveal the truth to you at the right time. When it's your time to be for the for the revelation, the Spirit will reveal it to you. Okay, so it says here now, verse 5 again, But watch you in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. Verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered, all right? And the time of my departure is at hand. Now, now listen, I believe that this was at the end of Paul's ministry, and I believe Paul's ministry was probably about 30 years I believe it's about 30 years. I believe his ministry start, probably started in, in AD 40. Cause it says, cause, um, he knew Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. All right. And he was out to destroy the messianic church. That, that was his mission when he was a devout Jew now. He was a devout Jew. He comprehended the law. All right. And he was here. Yeah, he was on a mission to destroy the church. And then our Lord got his attention. How? Blinded him. Blinded him when he was on his way to uh, where was it? Where was he headed to? Um, Damascus. To where? Damascus. Damascus. Yeah, I think yeah, Damascus. I think that's where he was headed. He was headed to Damascus to take captive the the Messianic Christian Church. All right, but our Lord stopped him. All right, and I think I think after that, Paul's Paul's ministry started. Uh, I believe ten years after that, because Paul spent three years first. All right, with with our Lord. He spent three years with our Lord learning this, the hidden mysteries, the things that were going to happen during his ministry. All right. Basically, this is still his ministry. We're just, it's just being passed on to us. It was passed on to Timothy. It's been passed on to us. We're called to take this message and share it. That's what we're called to do. Okay. So that's our, that's our mission now. So we're doing the same thing, but now Paul is sharing. Okay. Paul is sharing here. Now he said again, verse six, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. See, that's the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Because we are people of faith. And we trust our Father. All right? That He's got everything in control. All right? Even when bad things happen to us, that's for a purpose. Again, it's always for, everything is for a purpose. Everything is to draw people to God. To this word, to find out who God is and what He's about, and how much He loves us. Okay, so everything. So now Paul's ready. He's he's pretty much he pretty much had it. He says now he says he goes he he goes now verse seven. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He says henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only. But unto all them also that love his appearing. Okay. So we have to remember that, that, uh, we're going to get, we're going to get to see Jesus. Now we don't, we don't, we've never seen Jesus, but we're going to get to, we're going to get to see him one of these days. Okay. He's our Lord. Okay. God is our father, our eternal father. Jesus is our Lord, our brother. We're going to get to see him one of these days. All right. And this message came through Jesus was passed on to Paul, and now Paul has passed it on through letters to us. All right, now again, this letter is specifically written to Timothy, but that's okay, because we're still a part of that that true Christian church that has to know the truth, how things went. Now, we have to comprehend that this is history too. All right, this is history, okay? So we're looking, we're, we're reading stuff that Paul was writing to Timothy at that time, but it still pertains to us. We can still learn from it, okay? So now, so we, now we continue here. 
Verse 9, now Paul kind of changes directions. And he's telling uh, Timothy, do your diligence to come shortly unto me. So now he's telling telling Timothy. All right, now he's sharing a little bit of, of you know, his, his, uh, his, his need, his want, okay? For Demas has forsaken me, having loved the present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Sirius says, to Galatia, Titus unto Del, 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 Del Matia. Okay? Now he's sharing now. Now, now, now the, the first guy, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. And listen, we see that all the time. And we see it in, in big ministries. Not just, you know, this is a small ministry right here, right now. But I'm, I'm praying that God will cause it to grow. But we've seen a lot of these so-called pastors, ministers that claim to be Christians and they run off back into the world. Now, now here's the thing about being saved. If you're good with God, now this goes back to the prodigal son. All right. This goes back to the prodigal son. All right. His father, he came and asked his father for his inheritance and his father gave his inheritance and he ran off. Okay. Now our father's the same way. We've get, we've gained his inheritance. And if we choose to run off, he's going to say, okay, because God loves us that much. But here's the greatest thing. Just like in the prodigal son, when the prodigal son came back, the father received him back. It's the same with our father. We can run off, but, but comprehend, if you die in your sin, if you run off back into the world, and you die while you're uh, praising the world, you know what I'm saying? You're going to go wind up someplace you don't want to be. And more likely that's going to be hell. And then from there... If nobody prays you out of hell, you're going to wind up going to the lake of fires, okay? So, it's very important for us to stay steadfast. Stay as strong as you can. We have the power within us. God has given us His, his Spirit, His power, okay? So now, let's continue. He says, he says, verse 11, Only Luke is with me. He says, take Mark and bring him with you. For he, for he is profitable to me for the ministry now, okay? Now, now, I believe this was the time when they went, when, when Timothy went to go see Paul, right before Paul said, I'm done. I believe that Paul shared the letter to the Hebrews. All right. I believe that. I believe Paul probably shared it with Mark and Mark wrote the letter. Now, I believe that Paul probably had Mark write the letter because the, the, uh, the children of Israel would still listen to Mark. Okay. All right. Now they wouldn't listen to Paul because they tried as they wanted to kill him. Even the Messianic Church wanted to kill him at one point. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, so I I can't share this letter. I can't share this letter to the to the Hebrews, which goes all the way back to the beginning of the nation of Israel, the children of Israel, all the way back to their Exodus when they exited uh, uh, Egypt. It goes all the way back to then. It goes all the way, way, way back. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So. So, so I believe that Paul shared this message with Mark, and Mark wrote the letter. Okay, and when we get to Hebrews, and Hebrews is a is an awesome letter because it shares a lot, shares what Christ did for us and who our eternal Father is in that in that letter. Okay, so I can't wait till we get there. So it's awesome. We're getting there. Okay, so it says here, only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with you, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychias have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, whom you come, whom when you come, bring with you. All right, so he wants him to bring this and And he says, and, and the books, but especially the parchment. Now, that, that means that, that Paul, Paul was uh, continuing to write. Continue to write letters, continue to write his thoughts, whatever it was he, he knew that he had to write. Okay. And he also knew that he, he had to study because there's books that, that he wanted, you know what I'm saying? Before his departure. And I believe that it all, it might have per day. I'm telling you, it has to do when he says to write. I believe that's when Mark wrote the letter to the Hebrews. I believe Paul dictated it. All right. And, and, and Mark basically wrote it. And, and went and shared it as his, you know, with the, with the Hebrews, okay? And then he says here, he says there, Alexander, verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith has, did much harm, he did much evil, okay? Again, 14, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. 
the Lord reward him according to his works. Now, now comprehend, comprehend. Now, we don't get judged. We get rewarded now, okay? We get rewarded. Now, and now Paul's kind of flipped the word here. You know, he's trying to use it as, okay, you're going to get rewarded some some way that you're not going to like. All right? Because obviously Alexander was somebody that was close that was close to Paul. If, if he wasn't, Paul wouldn't be mentioning his name. So obviously this Alexander was one, at one time connected to Paul and now has flipped and gone the other direction. All right? So he's sharing. Now you have to comprehend again. Like, you can run off into the world. You die in the world. You're going to die in the world. That's why he said, you know, that that these guys have just taken off back into the world. All right? So he's saying now, remember that you're going to get you're going to get judged. If you run off into the world, you die in the world. Everything that you've done, said, has been documented. It's in a book. It's in your book. It's in the book. Now, if you're not, if your name's not found in the book of life, you're not going to heaven. You're not getting, you're not going into eternity, into the eternity with our eternal father and, and Jesus. You're going to wind up going someplace else. But see, you're going to get judged by the things you've said and done. Now, for us, it's the same thing. We're going to get done by the, by the, we're going to get rewarded by the things we've said and done about God's word for God. We're going to get rewarded. Now, what, what did Paul say? He's going to get a crown of righteousness. Now, now Paul teaches us that. He's taught us that. And, and I think it's in uh, Thessalonians. He talks about reward. We get rewarded. Okay. Now, again, I like to say, the more you do, the closer you get to sit to God. All right. The less you do, the further you sit from God. But you're still there. Now, don't get me wrong. You can sit on your salvation. Now, we're called to do something, but you can sit on your salvation. You can sit on it and say, okay, I'm good with God. I'm going to hang out here. I'm going to read his word and, 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 you know, and I'm, but I'm not going to get out there and share the ministry because I'm too scared. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to take a, a step of faith and get out there and do that. You know what I'm saying? So, again, it's like, I like to say, like a baseball field. The closer you are to God, the closer you're going to be to home plate. That's where God is at, on home plate. So now, I'm hoping that I'm up close. I'm going to do the best I can to carry on whatever life I have left. And I figure I got another 20, 30 years left in me. You know what I'm saying? If God God willing, Lord willing, if, if they choose for me to go home, then they take me home. If not, I keep moving forward. And I keep pressing, pushing this ministry. And I keep sharing this message of salvation. Okay? So he says here again, now... Okay, so he says, verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. 15, of whom be you aware also, okay? For he has greatly withstood our words, okay? Now, he's telling Timothy, he's warning Timothy, be careful, Lord. be careful with this guy because he's turned on us now. He's, he's against us now. He's speaking against us, all right? So, and that's going to happen with us as we get, as we get further and further out into the community and start sharing this message. People are going to, they're going to attack us and they're going to say stuff. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to believe what we say, but we just keep pressing forward. Verse 16. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. Now he's talking about, cause, cause, now I know at the end of, at the end of, uh, at the end of, uh, at the end of Acts, we know that Paul went to prison. We know that Paul went to jail, all right, because he was defending himself, defending the word, defending his his uh, his, his commitment to God, our eternal Father. So he'll get to prison. Now I know that he, I don't know. It's it's rumored that he went to prison twice. Okay, that he went to prison twice. So and this may be the second time he was in prison. Now I don't know. Now he's saying the first time. Now he's saying the first time he says. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. In other words, he said, all these, all my buddies, all the, everybody that, that, that uh, was supposed to be backing me has run off. And it happens. Shoot, man. There are people that come around, and I've had people that come to church, and now they're gone. And who knows when I'll see them again. You know what I'm saying? And now they don't have to come. They can watch on, on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? And this, and and we check see who's who's watching. So we we, we kind of know who's 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 keeping track. We're keeping track of who's been coming and going through Facebook. You know what I'm saying? They don't have to be here as long as they're there. You know what I'm saying? And not forsaking the the, the message. Okay. So so he says here again, verse sixteen. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Okay. 
Okay, now we're called to support one another. We're called to love one another. And sometimes it's hard because, man, I don't, Des puts up with me. Sometimes I wonder how. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I, I give her a hard time sometimes. And I don't mean to, but, you know, I, I, I'm trying to be as honest as I can with her. And then sometimes I share, and I'm, I'm maybe I'm being too honest, but then I'm kind of like, no, I'm called to share. And and then she's honest with me, and then we both get hurt, and that's that's part of growing together. You know what I'm saying? That's part of growing together in God and in love and learning to love each other unconditionally. That's not an easy thing to do. You know, God loves us unconditionally. He He says, hey, I love you. You know, you want to run off and, and be, make a fool of yourself? Go ahead and run off and make a fool of yourself. All right? God will allow us to. We're to, we're to, uh, how to say it, judgmental, to uh, strict with each other. We have, we put too many rules on each other. So we don't, we say, okay, I'm going to love you if you do this for me. Or I'm going to love you if you do that for me. There's all these expectations of love for us. And that's because that's what the world throws at you. You know what I'm saying? You want to be famous? You want to be loved by the world? Dress like this. You know, look like this, act like this, if you want the world to love you. That, those are those conditions that the world has conditioned. And then, of course, we're still in this flesh of sin, which is connected to that. So we think, yeah, that's what we want. We want, to, we, want to, we want people to love us. We want people to like us. So what do we do? We start to be like that. You know what I'm saying? And it's not hard to because we're already in the, we're already in the flesh. All right? So let's continue here now. He says... Uh, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. Okay? I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, he says. Now, think about it. Now, I, I comprehend what Paul's saying because when I believe that I was <laughs> delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Okay? I went to prison. And I was connected. I was there. You know what I'm saying? And prison is an awful thing. I don't. I don't want. I, w- I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't want anybody to go to prison for no reason because it's awful. I mean, going to jail, going to jail, going to county is bad enough. You know what I'm saying? But to actually have to go to prison, I believe that my father and my brother did the same thing for me. They delivered me out of the mouth of the lion. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You know what I'm saying? And it says here, verse verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Thank you, Father. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. That's us. Remember, we're going to get delivered out of... We don't know, we're not going to go through uh, the tribulation. We're not going to go through the ugly things that are, that are going to happen in this world. Now, it's, it's not ugly now. It's not ugly now. It's going to get ugly, right? And you can just tell by there's programs on, on the TV. God is showing us, giving us examples of what's going to happen in the future. During the tribulation, there's going to be a lot of ugliness. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad that we're going to get raptured. I'm glad that we're going to get taken away because we're not going to have to go through that. We're not going to have to deal with that kind of uh, hurt and pain and sorrow. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get delivered, he says. He says, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Now, every he didn't say just some. He said everything. Every evil work. We are not going to be, once we're raptured, we are no longer connected to this world. All right? So we don't, we will no longer have this ugly, evil flesh. We'll have a glorious body, righteous, glorious body, which we're promised. Okay? Now, verse 19. He says, Salute Persia and Aquila and the household of Osephorus, okay? Estrus abode at, at Corinth, but Trophinius have I left at Maltum sick. Do you diligence to come before winter? Ebalus greets you, and Prudus, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brothers. The Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. All right. Now this sends the, the two letters to Timothy now. Okay. Now, man, to think about it. Now again, Paul is sharing a little bit of the church. Okay. All right. He's sharing a little bit of the church with us there, the people that were connected to the church. And uh, so it's just like us. You know what I'm saying? We greet each other. You know, greet my mom, Mary Lou, Barbara. 
you know, anybody that's watching out there, you know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I thank you for, 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 for coming and I thank you for watching and thank you for listening because this message is for us, including me. Because as I read it and I'm taking it in again, God reminds me, hey, I gave it to you first to share with your mom and Barbara and Lou and Des and anybody else who's listening. I gave it to you to take it and share it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm here sharing this. And only God can reveal it to you. I can't. I'm not about the revelation here. I just share. God is a, he, re, he reveals it to you. He shares. And sometimes it may take a while. For me, I would ask God while I was in prison. I'd ask him a question. Sometimes it would take him three or four months to answer me because he had to prepare me for that answer. You know, he said, I can't give it to you right away. Keep reading, keep studying, keep going over the word. And then at the right time, I will reveal it to you. When you're ready for the revelation, he will reveal it to you. Now listen, I don't know how many times I read the word from beginning to end while I was in prison. I know I know. I read the letters I read from Acts through Hebrews. I think it was like 13 times I read it. And I read it over and over. And as I read it over and over, the Spirit revealed more and more about what I was to share, what I was sent home to share, and I was sent here to share with you guys. So I thank God for that. I thank God that even if it's just us, the small group, because it doesn't have to be a big group. Listen, it only, it only took one man to share this message with the then known world, and that was Paul. You know what I'm saying? There's more of us now. You know what I'm saying? So between us, we can get this message of salvation and get people saved and teach them to get their families saved, their relatives uh, even those that have passed away, we can pray them out of hell, make sure that, that, that everybody that we love, everybody that they love, winds up in the same place, all right? In the presence of our eternal Father and our Lord. That's what we're all looking forward to, that glorious body, all right? Let me pray us out real quick so we can, so we can have some dinner. Father God, Father God, I just thank you, and I praise you, Father, and I love you, Father. And uh, there's a lot... There's a lot that we still have to comprehend, Father. But we thank you that you, you're patient with us. And we thank you that even if it's even if it's one day a week, Father, I'm trying to encourage these folks. I'm trying to encourage all folks, every, anybody that's listening, anybody that's here, to just go and, and read. Like my mom, I encourage her to read chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and she did. Praise you, Father. Thank you for encouraging her, because only you could do that. I could just make a suggestion, but it was your encouragement that got her to read that after we, we we spoke yesterday. So thank you, Father. Thank you, because that's that's what it's all about, just taking your word in, which is you, Father. So the more we take, more of the word we take in, the more of you we take in, and the more we become like you and our Lord, Father. And we thank you for this opportunity to gather, even if it's once a week, Father. We thank you. We know that probably once a week is not enough, but but we thank you that, in that, in that once a week that they can go back and, and reread this chapter over and over and over and take it in. And, and you reveal the truth to them, Father. And I thank you that you're doing that. And, and I praise you, Father. And I give you all glory and all honor in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.